Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. My name is Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we are on episode number nine. Nine. N no Spanish. Wow, I was no, expecting nueve, but okay, that's excellent. <laughs> I couldn't think of what it was. <laughs> Stumped. Anyway, yeah. uh, so this week we'll be talking about uh, Dave Maley and his unfortunate departure from San Jose. Yep. We'll be talking about another unfortunate article of sorts. Or No, it wasn't an article, it was actually on NHL Network. Yep. On television, they did this. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's an atrocity. So uh, we're talking about that, and uh, we we'll also fan question about Pavelski. That's true. It was a fan question. We'll talk about Pavelski since it's his uh, last year of his contract. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk about a little bit of the promo schedule that the Sharks just released. That's right. And the uh, masks. The masks. We're going to be talking. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then uh, the last bit is our. Yes, we'll be talking about the. Uh, we're going to say it here, and we'll say sure. it at the end. The right. uh, 200 subs for the free. Uh, t fin Factor T-shirt, which yeah. is pretty awesome. So um, be sure to uh, like, subscribe, tag three friends, do all that fun stuff, mm -hmm. and you can win a T-shirt from the Fin Factor. How awesome yeah. is that? Cool. All right, so you ready to start the show? Let's do it. Okay, great. And, and uh, I, I can't. I don't know what that says. I don't know what it is. I can't. Yeah, I gotta do it. I gotta go. No, we'll do it live. We'll do it live. <laughs> I've calmed myself down now. So I ain't crying. <laughs> anyway, uh, okay, so topic number one, we want to talk about Dave Maley, mm -hmm. um, former Shark. He started up a little area or little rink called Rolling Ice in the Santa Clara County Fairgrounds. Two rinks. Two rinks, yes. Yeah. It was one facility, my bad. Yeah. Um, and that's actually where I started playing roller um, more seriously is in, in our high school days. Yeah, so I remember going to games and watching you play there yeah. a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah it was, it's, I mean, it was a pretty fun time um, for for all of us kind of coming up and, and being able to play the game. I had actually already played with uh, some guys from, uh, not even from my high school, but I had played a uh, league or whatever it was over there at Rolling Ice. And, you know, it was, it was a really cool and fun time for us going into our freshman year where we were able to, to meet other guys that were playing roller hockey and say, hey, do you think other guys that you went to school with that are now going to other high schools would be interested in playing at, you know, Rolling Ice and doing like a league over there? Well, we end up going to Rolling Ice talking to Dave Maley and saying, hey, Dave, do you think we could do this? Is this something that you think would be popular? Would you mind kind of putting this league together for us? Because he was putting together little leagues. Mm -hmm. And this was basically asking him to go above and beyond and say, can you can you basically create this league for us? Yeah. And um, he was super cool about it. And that's how we got started doing high school roller hockey, which is awesome because I always say this is my, my claim to fame with with uh, high school, is that we got the whole roller hockey thing going with all the other, the other um, schools and whatnot. And with that league coming together, when we graduated, it ended up becoming a sanctioned sport. It wasn't just mm -hmm. clubs anymore that were coming together to try to play. And so I attribute that to Dave Maley basically taking the time to say, okay, let's put this whole high school thing together. Well, now if you look at it, You've got high schools, you know, Bellarmine's our high school. Um, mm -hmm. They're not just doing roller hockey as a sanctioned sport, they're actually doing ice mm -hmm. as a sanctioned sport. So, and I said this on Twitter, I think is what it was. You know, everybody credits Gretzky with bringing hockey, the ice West. hockey, yeah, yeah, to the West, right? I kind of credit Dave Maley for bringing like roller hockey and ice hockey to the youth of San Jose mm -hmm. uh, because he did really open the doors for, uh, you know, the guys like us who were just getting into high school and trying to find an outlet and a place to, to, to have real good competition and uh, you know traveling and everything else. He, he made that possible for us. So I just wanted to kind of tell that story and let Dave Maley know if you happen to be watching. <laughs> um, you know, we really do appreciate everything that you've done here. I know you're going to Minnesota and I wish you the best uh, on your, your journey out there, whatever it is you're planning on doing. I just want to say that we really did appreciate uh, everything that you did for the youth of San Jose and getting us um, you know, involved in roller hockey and eventually in ice hockey, whether that was really directly you or not. Indirectly, it was, it was partially due to you. Um, the Silver Creek Sportsplex, him getting involved in that and starting that up and getting everybody out there to, to play. And he had open skates that are free, still mm -hmm. have open skates that are free. Really, it just kind of fosters the youth in San Jose to be able to play the game, and it's just a really awesome experience to have been a part of. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, he started the, the sportsplex where mm -hmm. I play soccer. Yeah. And have been for, I think since they opened, actually, since mm -hmm. 07. Um, 
I mean, I have many friends that have played there. And actually, we just won a championship last yeah, week. Yeah, that's right. Last yeah. Week. Uh, Congrats again. <laughs> yeah, so my picture's up on uh, their Facebook page. Oh, which sweet. Is great. Yeah, yeah nice. Uh, but yeah, I had the fortunate experience of getting to go to a Sharks game with Dave Maley. Oh, wow. Um, one of my buddies met someone or won something where you um, go to a game with a former player. Right. And the game I went to originally was a Giants game, and we got to sit with a former player. And then um, the guy was new to hockey, and he didn't know hockey, and I oh, did. Okay. So he asked me if I would be the first one to do it. And so I was like, yeah, <laughs> cool. <laughs> so I got to sit uh, probably like, I don't know, 10, 15 rows behind the goal. And Dave Maley came and sat with us, and um, he stayed the whole game. That's and great. And he gives us a little picture of him, uh, his rookie year. He won the Stanley Cup. And he said... Uh, after he won the cup, he's like, "Ah, oh, that was easy." You know, like, <laughs> I don't know why is it so hard, and then he never won it again. <laughs> right. So uh, he his name is on the cup, which that's, is really cool. That's great. Yeah. Um, I think he was with Montreal. I think that was the last cup oh, Montreal really? won. I have, to, I have to go back and look at that. Mm -hmm. That'll be a producer note. But um, and I'll see if I can post that picture too. You can yeah, see yeah, it. yeah. Uh, it's a great picture of him with the cup. Yeah. yeah. He's, so, he's so young. He's like, in his, I don't know if he was a teenager yeah, or right. early twenties, but he looks super young. Uh, he had some really cool stories and. Uh, I was really excited. Really nice guy. Yeah. Really down to earth. Yeah. Mellow. Um, I mean, I think you guys get to get a little bit of that because he was on the broadcast for a number of years. Mm -hmm. um, but great guy. He'll be missed. And he did a lot for San Jose. Absolutely. One of, yeah. one of the earlier guys to do a lot and get into the community. Yeah. So, yeah, again, uh, Males, if you're watching, uh, we really do appreciate everything you've done. Um, with that, actually, I did have some really old jerseys that I kind of yeah. wanted to share. Um, and this was actually not really from the Rolling Ice days. It was right before that. And it was when I was um, playing with a team called the Crushers. Look at this ugly thing. <laughs> <laughs> that screams 90s right there. Dude, <laughs> yeah, it's got the purple stripe and everything. That's like and ducks and sharks mixed it's, together. It's pretty bad, yeah. Um, it's <laughs> And actually, the, the, the number, I was surprised. I didn't think 66... That's, I didn't think I was a Lemieux fan at the time, but okay, great. So anyway, this atrocity, this is uh, when I was traveling right before I started playing the high school Roll on Ice. And so this is what I was doing um, before I got there. When I got to Roll on Ice, actually there's two of these, and I'm not sure chronologically which one's which. I think this one's first, because it's, again, the same material and it's gnarly, you want to <laughs> grab that one. And then um, Travis over at uh, Sportsplex. If you happen to be watching, you've seen this one before I came in with it. So yeah, this guy here, I mean, this is horrible this material and everything, yeah. But has a little burly batch there, uh, burly hockey. And I think that they stepped up their game with the lighter weight one. That's why I think this is the next one in line. We got a patch from uh, Volcanics. We think we were sponsored. Who's Not just the little Volcanics? one, but the big the big one on the back. Volcanics was a uh, roller hockey um, uh, a brand that they, okay. yeah, wheels and whatever else, I think. That also screams 90s. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, just really cool stuff from, from the rolling ice days. And going to uh, when we started playing um, high school, there you go. These, oh my God, it's ugly. <laughs> so these ones here, uh, now nowadays, these are the Bellarmine ones. Nowadays, you'll actually have Bellarmine on there because it's a you know, sanctioned sport. But you can see on the shoulder patch, yeah, he's got that one. And on this guy here, I've got you know the Bellarmine, oh, the, the Bell Bellarmine. itself. Yeah, the Bellarmine. <laughs> go so, Bells. Yeah, go Bells. So yeah, this is uh, all you guys that are, were uh, playing on the Bellarmine ice hockey, roller hockey team uh, recently. You guys have got the nice Bell logo around the front. We had to sacrifice the, the logo on the front for the power play hockey, <laughs> which I think is how we got these jerseys. They sponsored us. It was a shop at the time. Totally I'm not sure if they're still there. Maple Leaf jerseys, too. It was Maple Leaf jerseys. <laughs> it was exactly what it was, yeah. And then they just put the uh, the Bellarmine stuff yeah. on it. So, um, yeah, pretty cool. Just kind of wanted to share that, you know. Um, I wouldn't have gone through all those experiences if not for, um, you know, Dave Manley and, and him setting up Rolling Ice and, and – the youth of today uh, wouldn't have much to go off of if not for the sportsplex, other than you know the ice and everything else. But um, you, you have done a lot, and we do appreciate you for everything that you've done. So thanks for that. Thank you. Moving on, yep. what was the next topic we were going to talk about? Goodness, uh, NHL Network. Oh, uh, <laughs> this will be a couple of days old now, but uh, yeah, they they went through the Pacific Division and ranked. Mike Johnson was on. This is on TV. Yes. Say and, his name, <laughs> Mike Johnson. He, Say his name. Yeah, he, uh, <laughs> he ranked. Uh, he went through everything like 
top best forwards, best centers, best wingers, best defensemen. defensemen yes. Uh, and then he said for the winner of the division, he picked the Anaheim Ducks, which I almost choked when I was like, "What? Anaheim, really?" <laughs> In fact, the San Jose Sharks. We'll show this tweet. They even replied to. Um, to, I guess, NHL Network slash hey, Mike Johnson. I think you forgot it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then on NHL Network on um, on the, the radio, radio, yeah, radio. Uh, was Boomer, uh, Jim Boomer Gordon, mm-hmm. and he actually did a complete 180, and he said he, would, he could see the Ducks missing the playoffs <laughs> because Edmonton and Calgary are going to improve drastically compared right. to last year. Um, and two teams are going to get bumped so he wouldn't be surprised if Anaheim doesn't make it Mm -hmm. and that the Sharks would win the division and he gave it an 85% chance more (laughs) 85% chance chance that they would win the division then not make playoffs like I think that was what happened right yeah and then he changed his 85% to 88% (laughs) in honor of in honor of Brent Burns Burns. (laughs) so uh, two different guys on the same network choosing completely two different ways. And yeah, and it's not even two complete different ways like, oh, I think the Ducks will win and oh, I think the Sharks will win, but the Ducks might be second. The Ducks might not make the playoffs, right, according to one. And the other one says they're going to win the division. I mean, me like, personally, we're going to be biased. Yeah. I don't know why. I, I, but <laughs> um, I I think uh, to, for me, Anaheim, I don't see them as a strong team. Yeah. Kessler's probably not going to play right. this year. He's, he's having I think it's hip problems okay. and he might have hip surgery and mm-hmm. be out. Um, he's not back yet, and that's a huge loss for yeah. defensively on their centers. Yeah. Um, John Gibson, their goalie, is a very good goalie. Right. But he also, I think he gets hurt almost every season. He misses some games too. And they just, they just don't seem as deep or as strong. Their defense is very good. Mm-hmm. They have very depth, very good depth of defense, but yes. the forwards are just not there. Corey it Perry's dropping off. Fowler, Lindholm, I'm trying to remember... Um, the other guys I'd are, but those look. are. Yeah. I mean, those are kind of the bigger ones. Are, are Fowler and Lenholm? One of those. There's a couple of guys that I'm missing, but um, those names stand out. And yes, they do have very good defensive core. And that was one of the things he said was they have the best defensive core um, in terms of the top four defensemen on on the, the, the roster. And comparing that to other rosters and their top four, while well, I'm looking at the Sharks, thinking, okay, wait a minute, Burns, Norris Trophy winner as of recent, um, and then you've got Vlasic and Braun, arguably. Shut down best defensive, defensive yeah. shutdown pairings in the league. Yeah. Um, I don't know how. They, I mean, if I, if they're number one in his eyes, we have to be number two. Like, there's yeah. I mean, to me, I I agree with Boomer that Calgary and Edmonton are going to be better. Mm-hmm. Edmonton is is such a just. It, it's you don't know what you're going to get because two years ago they beat the Sharks in the first round. Right, made playoffs, beat the Sharks first round. And then last year, last year they were like almost last place in the yeah. league, just bottom of the barrel. So, um, and it's weird because it was practically the same team. Yeah. Um, I hope for Tom McClellan's sake that they do better, just not when they play the same. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's usually the guy they pick on, right? They they pick on the coaches. Yeah. Um, which is funny because it was the same coach that that was there when <laughs> when they beat the Sharks in right. the second round. So it's you know first round. Or, I'm sorry, first round. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of a crapshoot, right? I mean, whether or not you you blame the coach or whether you blame the GM. We, we've seen this. We talked about this in previous episodes, too. People love blaming the GMs for, right. you know, oh, nothing's changed. Every, you know, that's, well, that's Edmonton why. Edmonton has their problems. You know, that trade, yeah. the Taylor Hall trade was just. It was bad. Hot garbage, yeah. as I like to say. Yeah. <laughs> just the, the return on yeah. that was just awful. Yeah. Um, but that that's. Neither here. That's there. another topic, and it's yeah. another team, so we don't really care. Right. Yeah. But, it's, but yeah. My, no, my point being that Edmonton and, and Calgary are trending up, yes. and Anaheim, I believe, is trending, trending down. Trending down, right. And I, I think they did a nice signing with uh, Kasha, I think, recently they had mm-hmm. him resigned. And yeah, like you said, Gibson. But again, I've said it with Corey Perry and, and Ryan Getzlaff, they're great players. They are on the downturn, and when you got a guy like Kessler who may not even play, that's a big hole in your, That's in your centers. That's a big, big yeah. hole. Yeah. So I don't know. I in terms of if they're gonna win the division, I think he's way off. Mike, I think you're just completely off. Now I'm just a guy sitting in a chair who's got a bunch of sharks memorabilia <laughs> behind him. So what do I know? But bro, I, I just I have a feeling Mike just doesn't watch a lot of West Coast yeah. hockey. 
A, a, a lot of those guys just don't. That's probably get what it is. A yeah. lot. They see the stats and they see the score boxes the yeah. next morning, and yeah. they don't get to actually watch a lot. I wonder where Vancouver falls in all of that. Do you think Vancouver is the worst team in the Pacific? I th- yeah. Okay. I think so. So I, in my opinion, it's almost like Vancouver, and then in terms of them trending down, it would be Anaheim, and above them, you're, you're looking at the other Pacific Division teams. Yeah, I think we see. I think Vegas is gonna relapse a little bit. I don't think they're. Well, gonna, they have to, right? Yeah. I, mean, I don't think they're gonna win the division. I think yeah. they'll. Make playoffs or at least be a bubble team mm-hmm. um, and I think also the Pacific Division is going to be extremely tight I think you're going to see I mean a point difference of making playoffs you might be seeing one or two teams right. out by one point yeah I think it's going to be come down to uh, those division games are going to be killer and that makes it like really fun to watch too yeah. when it is so tight like that because yeah. then it's not like just one other team that might be squeaking in and if you got the opportunity for you know a couple teams based on who wins and who loses and the point swings going back and forth i mean that can be really exciting stuff yeah. so you know yeah I, mean, it, I hope that we get to see that at the same time i hope the sharks are at the top of that pile as we're <laughs> looking down at that happening but hey it is what it is playoff hockey's uh you know it's a rough rough deal and yeah I mean, I don't really care if they win the division. I don't. That's no, not, I don't care either. It's not the yeah, banner I yeah. want to see getting lifted in the rafters right. again. So, um, but they do get home ice, which yeah. could or could not matter. I don't think it's much of an advantage, and I think Kevin Kurz has talked about that before. Yeah. Is, is it really an advantage? I don't think it is. We swept Anaheim without it yeah. last season. That's true. Last yeah. playoff. I think it's just nice getting home ice advantage for the fans to be able to, to potentially see more games. But you also want right? to strike first. Yeah. See, for me, I would rather not have home ice. I'd okay. rather see them go on the road and split games, mm-hmm. at least split. Right. So you win one of the two games on the road, and then you win your home games, and yeah. then you're in control. Yeah. That's what I think is better. And if you win both your road games, then you come home and you sweep it up. I think if you win both your road games, you're just the better team, period, and you're probably going to win that series anyway. Yep. And so for this week, the fresh catchphrase, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're not going to have one fresh catchphrase for you guys. We're going to have two. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to pick your team, right? Yeah. So are you agreeing with Mike Johnson? So hashtag Team Johnson. Or are you going to be with Boomer and be hashtag Team Boomer? Be Team Boomer. Team Boomer. <laughs> team Boomer for the win. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we were talking about playoff performers, and, um, you know, one playoff performer, obviously, Joe Pavelski. Um, not signed yet, which is kind of interesting and maybe well, a little concerning, but... Not signed to an extension. That's what I mean, but... He, he has this yes. season left. Right. So we don't know if they've been talking. Maybe he doesn't want to. Maybe the Sharks don't want to extend. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't imagine Pavelski not wanting to extend. Yeah. I don't yeah. think... Uh, he doesn't seem the kind of guy that would want to test the market to get big payout yeah because next i think his next contract is going to be not maybe his last depending on how many years Mm -hmm. but might be his last big Big, paycheck yeah um and that's a big deal so it could be a good thing that the sharks don't want to sign him because it's a little bit of an incentive for him to Mm -hmm. perform well Mm -hmm. players tend to play much better when they're have the incentive of uh you know being on their last contract and needing to to get that next one now Pavelski last season he started the season off injured um kind of like Thornton yeah he started clicking a little after New Year's sure. and then he was almost a point per player too he was one of the best players on the team mm-hmm. um I think he's gonna be going into the season healthy and similar to Thornton he's gonna do well I mean I don't think he's gonna be a point per game player right I could see 60 points out of him okay yeah um I think he can get to close to 30 goals, maybe 20, 25 goals. Okay. And then uh, a lot of those coming on the power play. Um, I think that would be an ideal season for him. Coming, Maybe even flirting with close to 70 points. I think that'd be awesome. Sure. Um, and then, you know, he's the captain too, so he's definitely the leader in the room. Yeah, and that's kind of, for me, where I start kind of scratching my head a little bit with the uh, with him not being signed is, you know, he, he's he's the captain. And you look mm-hmm. at situations like Montreal and you go, okay, he's the captain. They've already told him, oh, I'm not signing you. So he, we, nobody's said, we're not re-signing you or anything. Right. But um, it, it's just interesting because, you know, he's, he's that guy that was the, you know, the seventh round pick. Yeah. And he's worked his way up. He's worked hard and he's become the captain and he's on a contract year and we haven't extended him yet it just feels kind of weird an all-star all. player too yeah and he's an all-star um maybe not last year but two years ago oh, and he was an olympian at one point mm-hmm. too so i there's just a whole lot that's kind of going for him and you would think that by now they'd have come up with some news i haven't even heard any news like hey we're yeah. in talks 
you know, nothing, right? So um, just kind of interesting, and I'm just kind of wondering where that might go. And I don't know. Uh, I guess we had the question that you said. It was it was that's, a fan question. And that's what I was going to say. The, how much rope does Joe Pavelski have mm-hmm. uh, before? I mean, really, where does that? Where do you want to go with that? No, the question was how what's how big of a rope? Yeah. before they trade him, if they would trade him. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like he, to me, I mean, I don't know if the Sharks are going to be going for a player off of an Ottawa team or Montreal mm-hmm. team. That's definitely not going to make playoffs. Mm-hmm. They're not going to want Pavelski. They're, right. Pavelski would be more of if the Sharks weren't going to make playoffs. Exactly, yeah. And the Sharks are in the same position as Ottawa or Montreal, not making playoffs and trading off their assets. Right. And he's a great rental player because mm-hmm. it's the last year of his contract. I don't see the Sharks trading him unless they are out of the playoffs early. And obviously before the trade deadline, they look at their roster and they go, we're not making playoffs. Right. We need to blow up. Maybe not blow up a team, but trade Maybe unload Belsky and Thornton. Yeah, unload anybody who's got one year left on their on their deals mm-hmm. and get something in return for them in case they start looking at the team going, well, we missed playoffs and we're probably on the downturn. I should get yeah. out of here, right? I just, I don't see the Sharks, I don't see that happening to the Sharks unless yeah. there's some kind of catastrophic event of like injuries. one or two ma- major injuries yeah. where they're out for the season. Yeah. Um, I just don't see the Sharks. I mean, it would have to be Couture and Kane going down. Well, I was thinking... What if it was Vlasic and Jones? Okay, sure. Like two yeah. big players on defense. Mm-hmm. Um, Interesting, by the way, that you said Vlasic and not Burns going down. Well, not, not taking any way, thing away from Burns, but I think there's there's a topic there in itself. I'm going to have to look this up, but there's when Vlasic is out of the lineup, yeah. the Sharks are significantly worse Yes, in terms of defensively. Yes. Other teams just start scoring like crazy. Yeah. Um, I remember a couple of years ago, Vlasic got injured in was it the conference finals? Yeah, the uh, it was kind of a cheap shot too. I think stole to the an elbow to the back of the head. Yeah, yeah, a stole elbow to the back of the head in the the they missed a few boards, games, think, and that was, was you could tell the Sharks yeah, were just done. That was they it. couldn't handle it. Actually, that was was that the reverse sweep? I don't want to think about it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. So Vlasic, I think again, um, I don't want to say underrated because he's not really underrated anymore. He's not under the no, radar no, no, anymore. No. He's definitely underrated because uh, once again, NHL. dot okay. com or NHL oh, Network okay. yeah. came out with Fair. the top twenty defensemen, and he, wasn't, and he there. wasn't on it. Right. Well, because top twenty defensemen should have points and goals just like forwards, right? That's what makes them good defensemen. Burns, no. Carlson. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Best defensemen. Yeah, no. I, I think the there needs to be a new category, in my opinion. Norris would be great for best defensive defenseman. defensive defenseman. And, and then, then you could pick the Orr Trophy. Bobby Orr Trophy. Exactly, for uh, best uh, offensive defenseman, if you want to, fine. I think they should also introduce a Gretzky Award. Hmm. Most assists. Oh, okay, a yeah. Playmaker. Yeah. Award, which has been talked about before. Actually, that's not bad. I like that a lot. Why not? Yeah. No, recognize everybody for what they do in the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I agree with that. That's that's because you have a Maurice Rocket trophy. Most goals. Most goals. Why not have one for most assists? Hearts, most points. And then you've got, yeah, this one of the two guys is going to win the heart, though. Right. Whoever wins the most goals or most points, one of the two is probably going to get it. No? Maybe most likely, but not. It's not necessary. (laughs) Yeah. Because someone could have, like, 40 goals and 50 assists and some guy could have 60 assists and 10 goals. Yeah, true. Like Thornton. Right, <laughs> yeah. So, no. It doesn't we love you, Joe. Yeah. We love you, Joe. <laughs> Shoot more. Shoot. Shoot You've more. been hearing that your entire career. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Pass more. Yeah. How about that? Pass more. Give him a reason to do the uh, Gretzky Trophy. Yes. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe we call it the Thornton Trophy. Oh, there you go. That would make sense. Yeah. He's known for it, so. The Jumbo. Yeah. <laughs> In any case, yeah, back to Pavs. Uh, so the question really being, how much rope do you think he has before he gets traded? So, would again, I don't see him being, just like, like Aaron's, I don't see him being traded mainly because we would have to be a team that's not making the playoffs in order to unload a guy like that. Now, if he was younger, if he was a, a prospect, and we wanted to trade out to upgrade to something else, uh, yeah, you know, a for a playoff story. run, different story. But I don't think you drop a Joe Pavelski to pick anybody else up. No. And if you did move Pavelski off to another team, it's a, what other team's going to want, right? They're already in the hunt. It's a rental player. Yeah. So if there are I two teams that are in the hunt and you're swapping players, mm-hmm. it just doesn't make any sense. So 
I don't know. I don't. I don't know that he's going to get traded. I think the only, like you said, the only time you see him get traded is if the team is doing bad. So it's not how much rope does Joe Pavelski have. It's how much rope um, do the Sharks in general have? If they're if they're doing really poor the whole season, then they're going to have to watch their captain leave. And nobody, none of the guys on the team want to see Joe Pavelski go. I'm sure. So I mean, we could see a situation like in o five o six when the Sharks were on a. 10 game losing streak I think it was and they made the trade for Thornton um, right around Thanksgiving time mm-hmm. so the other thing about trades is unless the Sharks do something like that yeah, major loss in, in October and November where by Thanksgiving time you look at the standings and go there's no way we're making playoffs yeah. already yeah. Um, I don't think Pavs moves but um, again an injury here or right. Or just terrible performance. Maybe they ship off some players. So you're thinking, shake it up a bit. You're thinking more of a lack in performance before like mid season than not like trade deadline. I think yeah. I think there's there's a couple um, okay. There's a couple points in the season where you reflect on where you are mm-hmm. to determine what you're going to do. Thanks American Thanksgiving, one of them. Uh, Christmas, New Year's, another, mm-hmm. and then trade deadline, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, at those points, you should know where you're heading, where you're trending. Um, and a lot of times, the Sharks end up playing better in the second half than they do in the first half. They kind of get their butts in gear and and start really winning and mm-hmm. getting their points up because they know they need to get together right. or they're going to miss playoffs. Yeah. So, And they've missed once in the last dozen years. So uh, they know what they're doing. A lot of experience there. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, to answer the question... Um, <laughs> it's not. It's not a matter of Joe Pavelski having the rope, right? I think it's, it's, it's how the team performs, and if they're performing poorly in the beginning of the season, or you know, towards the midway point of the season, that you might, you might see, uh, you know, a shakeup, if you will, if if Pavelski's underperforming, if he's part of the reason why the Sharks aren't playing well. Yeah, you might see him go. I, I just don't see it happening. But um, that's the scenario, at least that we can come up with, where it might make sense to move him, and that's maybe why they're. Or one of the reasons why they don't have the the extension done yet, or it could be just that they've got some other understanding that we're not privy to. Um, and I don't know if there's much else to say about no, that, I just, really. But yeah, I yeah. think I think part of it is they don't want to tie themselves down with him, just in case. Yeah. Um, what if they don't perform well, and then they're stuck with? Pavelski for another two, three years. You know, the other thing to consider here is that Doug Wilson did say, I'm going to bring in a difference maker. Yep. And in order to do that, maybe you need to, to shake things up and give up a guy like a Pavelski to, to make it happen. I or just, you don't want to commit the money to Pavelski exactly. when you're trying to bring in a difference maker who, if you're calling him a difference maker, he's probably going to be uh, coming out a high price tag. So uh, That's what I think is going to happen. I think they're trying to stay flexible even okay. going into next year. Yeah, Let's say... Um, they bring in a high priced player and they don't have as much cap space. They can say, Hey, ca- hey, Pavs, yeah, hometown discount if you want to stay. This is how much we can pay you, right? I Otherwise, we're deep down the middle, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, I, I think that's probably it's a flexibility thing. I think, gotcha, for the reason not signing to an extension. Okay, well, uh, I think we've beat that dead horse. Yeah. <laughs> so it's over. But anyway, um, so I think we, the next thing we wanted to talk about was the Sharks playoff promotion. I'm sorry, not playoff. The Sharks promotional schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they've got some pretty cool stuff that's coming out for... They do. Uh, we'll for, put this up on the screen. Yeah. And you can see uh, there's nine different games that have promos. Uh, my two favorite are the Don Father. Okay. Bobblehead. Yeah. I think that's so awesome. Nice. So petting a cat, he's petting a shark. That's awesome. Um, the other <laughs> one is uh, the Warriors jersey, yeah. which they did last year. But I think, I think uh, we talked about this earlier, I think you were right, it was a blue jersey with yellow. The so Warriors blue. Last year was white. Oh, with, white. With the gold and the blue. Okay. And I know that because I have like four of them sitting in my closet. <laughs> I've actually not worn one. I've only worn one. I'll give you one. Excellent. And maybe we'll talk about doing some sort of promotional thing. Sure. With one. That could be some crossover two, to some Warriors fans that are watching. Here. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, get them involved too. Hockey's a great sport. You guys will love it. So anyway, yeah. um, that was the second one was uh, the... The Warriors jersey, yeah. which is yellow. Yes. With the the Warriors yellow and mm-hmm. the Warriors blue. Um, it just, it's very sharp. It reminds me of kind of the orange yeah. Barracuda jersey. It's just very, uh, 
out there in your face right <laughs> look at me yeah yeah that <laughs> craves attention yeah awesome well the ones that i'm looking forward to and we talked about all the baubles and if you guys have uh, any baubles again that you think we would like or that you think would look great right here on this table uh please let us know and please uh express interest in handing those over to <laughs> us well, we'd be happy to take them off your hands that said uh the owen nolan all-star bobble is uh, gonna be out there and yeah. thank you for not choosing that one i know yeah. we talked about it earlier so that i could say it because I, I love it <laughs> <laughs> so um, i don't know if he's actually pointing in the bobble if he, he is, is. it looks oh, like he's beautiful. doing the point. yeah, yeah. So if he's doing the point, I'm all for it. Um, if I if I can't get one, I'll be sad. But I'm really hoping that again somebody out there <laughs> grabs an extra I one. I think we'll just have to buy tickets to go to the game. Yeah, I may have to it. just buy tickets. Yeah. yeah, we'll just do that. That's okay too. And then let's see the other one. Oh, the Star Wars night. Yes. Where they have the um, Rebels and Empire shirts, mm -hmm. white for Rebels, black for Empire. And I think we wanted to give a little bit of a shout out uh, yeah. for this segment here. I think you might know these guys a little better than I do, actually. Uh, I don't know if you do. Well, my brother does. Yeah, it's the it's the pro really it's the producer, the producer of this show and of the other show, or is it someone no. that's on the other show? Just I oh, I don't know. Is he the producer? I think he's the producer. Host. It's the uh, host. He's the host. It's okay. You can talk too. You're yeah. part of the show. <laughs> this is a, see. It's it's this show is as friends talking sharks and friends talking to you. you can't see our producer you can still hear him it's totally okay so he's friends with one of the hosts of this the show called black series rebels and i'm sure yeah. we'll be able to put something on the screen down here over there up in my yeah. ear anywhere so <laughs> black series rebels if you're into like star wars stuff totally check them out um and if you are into star wars stuff you're going to want to go to that night and i don't know what the exact date is but again we put it up on the screen for you so yeah. you can see it right there and i don't know when we're going to pull it off but we're pulling it off now so um <laughs> Uh, yeah, really cool um, Star Wars night. I don't know if they're going to give you both shirts. I don't think they will. I doubt probably give you, one. you probably get to choose. Yeah, which would be cool, you know. It would be choose cool. Choose light or dark, you know. Or <laughs> if uh, each entrance had different shirts. Or yeah. if they, they might even lay them out on the on the chairs, and maybe they lay them out. And like, force people to fight to the death for them? Uh, that, or it's okay. like one section of white, one section of black. Gotcha, section, yeah. Like, and yeah. mix it up yeah. so that it blends in all together. Yeah, that'd be cool. So yeah, um, some cool stuff to look forward to in the promotional schedule. That's uh, what our favorite ones are at least. Uh, but yeah, pick your own favorite and be sure to head out to the tank and support your team. Yeah, yeah, very cool. So uh, the last, not last, second to last maybe, yeah. um, goalie masks. Yes. We saw some goalie masks recently come out on Twitter or yep. Instagram or whatever other social media that it was. And one of them was Antoine Bibou. Bibou. <laughs> it's just fun to say. Yeah. He's the uh, starting goalie for the Barracuda. Yeah. And he did a Jaws theme. So you can check this out. It's very got, awesome. Uh, it's got, uh, what was it their names? Clint and... Oh, wow. Well, I don't even know their and, names. I just uh, know Jaws the movie. That's yeah, all. They're going to need yeah. a bigger boat, basically. Yeah. Um, it's got some really cool imagery on there. And um, it's it's got a lot of news, I think, because of, of how cool it was. Right. And, yeah. and he's an AHL goalie. Um, getting in the mainstream news yeah. about it, so it's, it's pretty sweet. cool. Yeah. yeah, and the other one, and I'll let you explain it too, is um, Aaron Dell. His his mask. Yeah, this came um, out this last was, year. Yeah, we just wanted to do some some talk about like really cool masks, and yeah. uh, one of them was Aaron Dell. And I'll let you go ahead and explain it because you well, know the, the details a lot better than yeah, I do. Yeah, we'll put the picture up here too. Yeah. On the back of the mask uh, is Aaron Dell. The place in let Frozen. <laughs> yeah. The Let It Go song. I'm not going to make your ears bleed. I promise I won't yeah. stop singing on this <laughs> on this episode. <laughs> and, and we were talking about he should also add um, a Dell computer on right. one side and then Adele the singer on the other side. Right. And then you can have the trifecta of Adele. Um, Adele. Yeah, Aaron Dell. I Adele. think that would be awesome. So Aaron Dell, if you're watching, get on it. <laughs> get a new mask. Get a new mask this year. <laughs> nice. add, add some Aaron Dell stuff to it. Adele. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure he's watching too. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Um, so yeah, and then uh, the only other one that I thought was really cool that I wanted to bring up and we weren't really prepared to talk about, but we can't put the picture up on it was uh, Evgeny Nabokov and yeah. his. He's got like ghouls on the side of his mask. If you've never seen it, um, you're probably a newer fan if you've never seen it, but that's totally okay. And it's got a couple ghouls on the sides of it, yeah. and they just it looks really cool. We'll put the picture up, but I don't yeah, know if we, there's anything else you wanted to explain. Uh, we just we posted it not, on uh, Instagram last week. Yes, um, and some people saw it because Nabokov got inducted into the San Jose Sports Hall of Fame. So congratulations, congratulations. to Nabokov. Yeah. I believe he gets a plaque at the arena. Like, oh, you know those sweet. plaques are on the oh, yeah, concourse yeah, yeah. level. Yeah, I think that's where they go. Oh, that's great. So I don't know if they've unveiled it or if they've actually done the ceremony yet, yeah. but um, but be on the lookout for that. And cool. Congratulations again to. 
John Evgeny Nabokov. We're <laughs> entering it. That's right. His yeah. name, he did uh, John. Evgeny the, is right. Russian for John. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought he was just like nobody can say Evgeny. I'll just no. say John. <laughs> no, that's that's John in Russian. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Well, I think the last thing we want to talk about was the t-shirts. And again, we talked about it at the top of the show, but we want to reiterate so that you guys remember. Yep. We do have another t-shirt giveaway. 200 subs is what we're aiming for. So the way it works is make sure you subscribe. Make sure you link, not link, you tag three tag friends. three people either on in Instagram or Twitter. Right, Instagram, Twitter, whatever it is. And we have a black, large... Facebook is the other one, too. Sorry. Oh, Facebook. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. We, have, we have a black, large, the Fin Factor shirt. It's basically this logo, only bigger and in the middle. Yep. And uh, we'll be giving that one away. Uh, I, I love... What's the guy's name in Finland again? Uh, uh, Timu. Timu. Yeah. Timu, if you're in Finland, <laughs> if you win this, um, I'm, we're going to have to figure out how to get this thing out to you, bud. Um, but every for everybody else, I'm assuming you're local, and we could probably just drive it to you or something, yeah. or meet somewhere. Or we could mail it. Yeah, we could mail it. But if you're close enough, maybe just meet in person. That'd be cool to meet our fans too. So, yeah. and we'll uh, I'll see if Megan uh, Megan was our last winner, and I'll see if uh, she sent in a picture. Yeah, or not if her wearing the shirt. Yeah, we'd we'd love to, to have Megan. Um, actually, Megan, she also came up with uh, a, a question or something where she had a comment one time. I think it was on like the second episode or whatever where we oh, talked. Yeah. yeah, it was the same Megan, right? Yeah, good on. You, Megan. So, yeah. anyway, um, yeah, we want a picture of, of you in that shirt. So get on it, and uh, whoever wins this one for the 200 subs, we want a picture of you on that shirt as well, and we're yeah, happy we'll to put that up. On here. Yeah. yeah, no doubt. So I think that wraps up episode, episode nine. Episode number nine wow. of the Fin Factor. Next so, week, yeah. going to be double digits. Yeah, <laughs> we'll have to actually use two hands. It's amazing. What down. do I do with my hands? Put your hands down. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. If you don't understand the reference, I apologize. <laughs> in any case, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Please yeah, make sure you. to like, comment, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's it. So we'll see you guys next week. Next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five-star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode. And if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.